everyone! Welcome back to Worth the Wait for part 2 of our courtship series. So before we dive into the next topic, we just want to give a huge thank you uh, to everyone. <laughs> Glory be to God for each and every one of you because we are just so uh, thankful for your thoughts and for uh, just your encouraging words and your constructive uh, you know, comments that you were able to offer uh, after watching the first video. It's definitely helping us open up and right. you know be more comfortable with sharing yeah. our relationship with you guys. So we thank you so much. Please keep commenting, keep liking, subscribing, <laughs> giving your feedback, whatever it is. Just keep on doing it because it's really helping us as we commit ourselves to doing what God has impressed our hearts to do. Right. In our last session, we talked a little bit about having your purpose in a Christ-centered relationship. So this time, we thought it would be more fitting to talk about... Wait for it, wait for it. Preparation. <laughs> because some people might be saying right now, okay, so I get this whole dating with a purpose thing, but how, do I, how would I even know if I'm ready for something like that? Uh, if I am interested in, you know, eventually dating with a purpose, how would I even prepare? Even though we're both learning more and more about this every day, um, we just want, we thought it would be a blessing to go in and just talk about how can we individually prepare for dating with a purpose. And we're not going to be experts, but we're just going to share a little bit about what we learned and what worked for us. And hopefully, whether you're single, you're dating already, or wherever you may be in your, in your stage right now, we just hope that this might be a blessing to you. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> so, to all of my beautiful sisters out there, an important part of preparation before a Christ-centered relationship is to learn how to become a godly woman. For me, I realized that I had not cultivated all of the characteristics of a godly woman. And I prayed and I studied and I asked God to show me the areas in my life where I needed to be transformed and where I needed to be changed before I try to enter any type of relationship with anyone. So the first part about preparation is surrender. A godly woman knows how to surrender her life to Christ. For me, that meant to cut off things that were hindering me from allowing God to be in full control. I had to learn how to become so submitted to Him and comfortable with Him leading me so that I could later on be okay with whatever His plan was for me. I was always okay with surrendering a test or a job or whatever I was going through to God, but the one area where I felt like He would probably know me best, which is who am I supposed to be with and how am I supposed to be dating, I never surrendered that to him. I realized that I was just trying to hold on to that, trying to dictate who I was going to date, who I was going to be with, rather than letting God be in control. So I read this wonderful book. It's called When God Writes Your Love Story. I can't remember the authors right now, but I'll definitely post a link and in the information below. But I read that book and it really wrecked my heart and changed my perspective on how God is in control of my love life. So first, you got to learn how to surrender. The second part of preparation is patience. A godly woman is content in her singleness because she knows that God is her sustainer and he is in control. For me, that meant that I had to not make a relationship my idol. Come on ladies, let's keep it real. You know sometimes you're scrolling on Facebook, scrolling down Instagram, and you see somebody with their boo and you're over there like, I don't want a boo. <laughs> it makes you feel some type of way. So for me, I had to learn not to make a relationship my priority. I had to trust be patient and believe that when God was ready, he was gonna bring the man for me that I'm supposed to be with in my life. So I had to become comfortable with just being content in my singleness, using it as an opportunity to serve God and to learn more about myself and to develop my skills and not focus on trying to find a man and have a man. The Bible says in Proverbs 18 verse 22, he that findeth the wife findeth the good thing. Sisters, we have to allow men to be the pursuers. The man that you're intended to be with will be the one to pursue you and you will know because God is not the author of confusion and it will be so clear and you will have peace when that man comes in your life. So for now, just focus on being patient and trusting God. That's the best thing that you can do for, to prepare for a Christ-centered relationship. The third thing that I did to prepare for a Christ-centered relationship was study and prayer. A godly woman spends time studying the word and deepening her prayer life because essentially she's preparing to be someone's helpmeet. That doesn't mean that it begins the day we get married. Essentially, we should start preparing for that role today. For me, that meant becoming comfortable with what the Bible says a woman should be, studying very key scriptures, and it also meant learning how to cultivate the skills and the characteristics that the Bible speaks about. I also had to learn how to really get on my knees and pray for every situation because I wanted to be an encouragement to someone else, whoever that person was, when we started our relationship. 
relationship. Ladies, the top three things that I did to prepare for a courtship were to surrender to God's will, be patient, and study and pray. These were the best things that I could have ever done for myself because it's also helped my walk with God and helped me to continue to submit to Him each day. Now for the gents. So Shredder did an awesome job of explaining what worked for her, but men, our role cannot be overlooked in this equation. It was Alexander Graham Bell who said that before anything else, preparation is the key to success. Now we can take that quote and we can look at so many biblical uh, men in the Bible and see that that quote applied directly to their lives. Whether we look at Abraham, Joseph, Moses, or even Jesus Christ, they all had these periods of preparation uh, before they even eventually reached their calling. With that in mind, it's vital for us to be as prepared as possible for whatever it is that God has in store for us. And being that dating with a purpose is you know, pretty serious, uh, we gotta be ready. So what I'm gonna share with you are just some things that worked for me uh, during my time of preparation. I didn't know what it was that God was preparing me for, but I trusted in Him. So whether it was for a job or a relationship or pursuing further education or helping a friend or some other calling, I just knew that God wanted me to be prepared. There are three basic questions that, I'm, that I was trying to answer during my period of preparation. One, who am I as a man? Two, who am I as a person? Three, what do I have to offer? For question number one, who am I as a man? I wanted to come to an understanding of what role was I going to play in society, in a relationship, in a family. I wanted to know if people were going to see me or were they going to see God when they looked at my life. So I read in the book of Daniel and I saw that, you know, I saw Daniel, I saw the three Hebrew boys who just refused to bow down uh, to anyone other than God. And I saw, you know, their character and their conviction and their godly confidence about themselves. And I knew that, you know, I also wanted to, you know, extract those same qualities, those same personalities for myself uh, so that I could become a man of conviction, a man of godly confidence, and also a man of character. So in order to do that, I had to eliminate uh, the negative influences and the negative things that were in my life at that time so that God could properly work on me. So for question number two, whose am I as a person? I had to come back to an understanding of you know, recognizing my creator, you know, recognizing that I am a child of God, that you know, God is my heavenly father and that you know, I worship him in everything that I do. And I had fallen out of uh, reading my Bible every day so I got back into having my daily devotional times where it would just be me and God and I would be praying and reading and asking questions and searching for answers. Uh, really just allowing God to work on me by me having that conversation with Him. You know, and as I continue to do those very things of praying and reading uh, and studying, uh, you know, I gained a, a further you know, love and appreciation you know, for God. First Thessalonians tells us to you know, pray without ceasing, so I really had to push myself to come back into having that one-on-one -on -one time you know, away from all the influences, away from you know, friends, from family, just by myself, me and God, communicating with one another. You, know, you look at the story of Isaac and Rebecca and you see that you know, when Rebecca was coming um, you know, with the servant uh, to meet Isaac, one of the first you know, positions that she sees Isaac in is then he's out in the field and he's meditating and he's praying. And so I really had to strive to become a man of prayer. Number three, what do I have to offer? I had to look at my strengths and my weaknesses in my life and look at areas where I needed improvement to determine you know, what do I have to contribute to others. You know, I looked at my family, I looked at friends, I had to evaluate you know, what am I contributing to their lives? You know, how, what, what, strills, what skills and, and strengths is God developing in me to be able to give back to them? How was I going to give of myself to a job, to you know, a relationship, uh, to, or to something else, uh, some other avenue of my life, if I didn't know what I brought to the table? So you know, when reading your Bible, you see that you know Samson excelled with strength, and Solomon you know was great with wisdom. Uh, so looking at your life and looking at uh, you know the pathway that you're trying to to, to chart, uh, what do you have to offer? Is such a critical question. I had three questions that I was striving to answer during my time of preparation. You know, one. Who am I as a man? Two, who is am I as a person? And three, what do I have to offer? Okay, so just to sum up everything that we've individually talked about, um, we just want to say that this isn't a cookie cutter pattern. It's not the standard. It's not what you have to do to prepare. Right. It's just what we found worked best for us, where we were in our relationship with God. And it may be very different for you, but we just wanted to give our suggestions for some things that worked for us. The idea of preparation is very important because you need to be able to put yourself in a position for God to use you to serve someone else in future relationships. Alright, so we hope that this uh, message was a blessing to you. 
Uh, we really want this to be a dialogue as much as possible, so please, if you're currently going through your time of preparation, you know, share with us what's working for you, or if you've already encountered your period of preparation, you know, what did you do so that we can also you know, learn uh, as well. Uh, so we thank you so much again for watching. And Don't forget to subscribe. Yes, please. Here. Or there. Or here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so please stay tuned and we'll see you next time. See you in the next video. Bye. Bye.